there! Welcome! My name is Jessica and I'm in my Vegas PBS STEAM Camp Science Lab. STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. And these aren't just subjects we learn in school. STEAM helps improve our lives and our community. Today, with the help of experts, you and I are going to learn about the STEAM that's all around us in Southern Nevada that you might have never noticed before. Then I'm going to show you some fun activities that you can do at home to learn more. You'll even have the chance to send me pictures or videos of your results, but more on that later. To get started, we just need a question to investigate. Do you hear that? That means I'm getting a video call, and it looks like it's my friend Xenia. I asked her to call in today because she had a question she wanted to ask on today's show. Hi Jessica, I was wondering how PBS Kids travels to my television set. That is a great question, and I know exactly who we can ask to learn more. Let's talk to my friends Gary and Joe, who are both engineers here at Vegas PBS. Oh, hi everybody. My name's Gary, Vegas PBS Master Control Operator. Welcome to the home of Vegas PBS Kids. Come on in. I'm going to lunch, but if you know how to work a computer, I'm gonna put you to work right now and take a break. Welcome to my office, Vegas PBS Master Control. All the Vegas PBS Kids cartoons that you see on these screens behind me travel to us through something called an electromagnetic wave. You can't see these waves, but they are all around us. All these programs and shows that you see behind me travel to us and we receive them on our really big satellite dishes that we have in the back of our building. And my job as a master control engineer is to make sure that these shows are recorded and played at just the right time. Take a look at this computer screen. Think of it as a playlist. It shows all the programs that are gonna air on your TV today. When it's time for your favorite Vegas PBS Kids shows to air, we send an electromagnetic wave back out to something called a transmitter. My friend Joe is at our transmitter right now on top of Black Mountain to tell you more. Thanks, Gary. Hi, kids. My name is Joe. I'm a broadcast engineer and it is my job to make sure that all of our television equipment works properly. I'm up here on Black Mountain, and behind me is our Vegas PBS transmitter. In order to understand how transmitters work, let me first go into waves. Up here on Black Mountain, I am surrounded by waves. There are light waves coming from the sun. I can see these waves. I can even block them to create a shadow. The sound of my voice is also a wave, a sound wave. We can't see sound waves, but we can hear them with our ears. Behind me, these transmitters send out your favorite programs through invisible electromagnetic waves. Whether you can see them or not, all waves have one thing in common. They transfer or move energy like light, sound, and even television programs. If we could see electromagnetic waves, they would look like squiggly lines with peaks and valleys. We call them crests and troughs. There are short waves and there are long waves, and we call this wavelength. Vegas PBS sends these waves from our building where Gary was, and we receive them here at the transmitter site as microwaves. We then send out radio waves to your television. Microwaves are shorter in wavelength and radio waves are longer in wavelength. We built our transmitter high on top of Black Mountain so that the signal reaches the greatest distance possible and to avoid being blocked by houses and buildings. Now the tower is the antenna and the transmission equipment is inside the building. You may notice at night the flashing red light on top of the tower and that is to let planes and helicopters know that it is there. Thanks to the various types of electromagnetic waves, we can bring you your favorite Vegas PBS Kids programs. Wow, thanks Joe and Gary. That was really interesting. Let's review what we learned. There are different kinds of waves all around us. Waves move or transmit energy. 
PBS Kids television programs travel to your television through invisible electromagnetic waves. These electromagnetic waves are sent to your TV from our transmitter, which is a tall antenna located high on Black Mountain. Now it's our turn to think like scientists to learn more about waves. I noticed that Gary and Joe said that electromagnetic waves are invisible, but even though they are invisible, they can be blocked by buildings. That makes me wonder, how can I block waves that I can't see? So here's the plan. Your television remote uses electromagnetic waves to control your TV. You are going to investigate which of these materials block the waves and which don't. To do this, you will need your television remote control and different materials that you can easily wrap around it. I selected foil and plastic wrap, but these aren't the only things you can use. Be creative and see what else you can find around your home. You'll also need to make a chart to collect your data. In the first column of your chart, write the name or draw a picture of the materials you chose. When you've selected all your materials, observe their properties. Use your senses. What does the material look like and what does it feel like? Let's describe the properties of my foil. Using my eyes, I can see that it's shiny and I can't see through it. Once you've described the properties of your material, write your observations on your chart and make a guess which materials are going to block the waves and which won't. Then, one by one, completely wrap your remote control in the material and try to turn on and off your TV by pushing the power button. Did your TV work? If not, that means your material blocked the wave. Continue until you've tested all your materials and be sure to record your results in the last box. When you're done, take a look at your chart. Did you notice any patterns? What kinds of materials were better at blocking waves? And why do you think that? Now, let's check in with Xenia, who's doing this activity at home right now. Hey Xenia, how's it going? Hi Jessica, today I'm going to see if my remote control connects to the TV if I cover it in bubble wrap. It works. It also works if I turn it off. So some other things that I can use are maybe some tissue paper or a plastic baggie or a blanket. And then I will log the results on my paper. Now, let's check in with Luis, who is doing this activity at home right now. Hi, Jessica. This is my chart for the remote control. The material that I'm using is a plastic bag and the properties are smooth, thin, and clear. Now I'm gonna put the remote in the plastic bag and I'm gonna test, I'm gonna press a button to the TV to see if it works when it's covered in the plastic bag. Um, oh, so, so the remote what worked it turned off the, the TV when, when it was covered with the plastic bag. So that was cool. The remote worked when it was covered with the plastic bag. But now I'm gonna try a different material like paper. Wow, that was so creative. Thanks for sharing your work. An important part of being a scientist is sharing your work with others. Visit our website at vegaspbs.org slash steamcamp to submit videos or pictures of your results to me at Vegas PBS with your grown-ups permission. Keep in mind, if you're submitting a video, make sure I can see what you're doing and hear what you're saying. Also, you'll want to keep your video to one minute or less. We will post some of your projects on our website, and if your project is selected, we will mail you a cool PBS Kids bag and a new book. When you visit our website, you'll also find a copy of the chart we use to keep track of our data and links to PBS Kids shows and activities to learn more about waves. Speaking of learning more, one of the best ways we can learn more about a topic is to check out a book. My friend Noelle is a librarian and she is going to share some books that can help you learn more about waves.
Hi, I'm Noelle from the Sunrise Library, and today you learned quite a bit about waves, radio waves and sound waves. So, what do I have here? I have a perfectly ordinary bowl, maybe like a popcorn bowl, and a perfectly ordinary wooden spoon. These are probably things you have in your own house. But there's a little bit of magic inside because I can make this bowl sing. Listen. We take the spoon, we go around the edge, the bowl will start to hum. You hear that? So what's happening is the molecules in the bowl are excited and they're moving very fast and they're causing sound waves. The sound waves reach our ear and we can hear it because of the small bones inside of our ear. It's pretty neat, huh? I'll bet you could find a bowl at home that does this. But you know that's not the only kind of wave. There are also water waves. So if we take some water and we pour it in our bowl. And if we move it back and forth, kind of like the way you would move water back and forth in the bathtub, you're seeing water waves. Water waves are pretty cool to play with, especially if you threw something heavy in this bowl and you would see it go plop and the waves would come out. It's very cool. There are many different kinds of waves. There are water waves. There are waves, water waves, that are so enormous, they're called tsunamis, they can wipe out entire villages. This is a book about one of those kind of waves. There are sound waves. You can make a guitar out of a box and other items that you have at home, and you can create sound waves with a homemade guitar. There are waves that you might hear when you are at an amusement park and you hear the flapping of tent flaps. The flapping of tent flaps is caused by wind, which is another kind of wave, movement waves. You can find information about all different kinds of waves in a book like this one, what is a Wave by Linda Ivanchik. She talks about the different kinds of sound waves, radio waves, the kind you learned about today, water waves, even air movement waves, and the kind of wave you do with your body. To find more about waves, go to your local library or visit lvccld.org. Welcome back to the Vegas PBS STEAM Camp Science Lab. I've already learned so much today and I hope you have too. And luckily we still have time left, so let's investigate another question. Here's another caller right on time. It looks like my friend Luis. Hey Luis, welcome to the Vegas PBS STEAM Camp. Do you have another question I can help answer on the show today? Hi Jessica, I was wondering how are bridges built? That is a great question. And luckily, I have a friend who works at the Nevada Department of Transportation that can help figure this out today. Let's go talk to him. Hi kids, my name is Abed Solaria. I'm the resident engineer for the state of Nevada Department of Transportation. I administer all the construction projects for the state of Nevada. You are right here at the Centennial Interchange. What's so special about this area and this location is we're building the second longer bridge in the state of Nevada. And this is gonna be one of the biggest interchange after we're done building these bridges. This bridge is over 2,500 feet long, about a half mile long. Or think of another terms, seven football fields laid end to the end. Game over. As you know, the engineers solve problems. So building this bridge will solve congestion problem and also connects two freeways so people can travel safely from one freeway to the other freeway. For bridges bridge this size, it takes a long time to design and plan, especially this uh, size of bridge, it took over a year or so to design before the construction can even start. Hi, I'm Tony Ilya, spokesman for the Nevada Department of Transportation. Behind me 
is a column that is supported by a foundation that goes down 60 to 80 feet in the ground to ensure stability. Now columns are very important. They act as like a leg to a table, keeping bridge stable and strong. We're standing underneath a bridge form that acts like a cake pan. Instead of putting in cake batter, we're going to be putting in concrete and steel and baking it or curing it until it's done. Once it's completed, we'll remove the form or the cake pan and then we'll have our bridge. Hi kids, my name is Khalid Xavier Arragao. I'm an assistant resident engineer for the Centennial Bowl project. Right now we're standing on a, a bridge that's being built. This gray material that you see is called concrete and this is called reinforcing steel. The combination of these two is called reinforced concrete. That's the material that makes the bridge sturdy and strong. This bridge that you see right now is ready to uh, accept concrete. After we pour concrete and after it's dry, that's the surface that cars drive over. Building a bridge takes teamwork, everyone working together towards a common goal. Thanks for joining us today to learn more about bridges. Wow, thanks guys. It was really neat to see how a bridge is built. Let's review what we learned. Engineers design bridges to solve problems. The second longest bridge in Nevada is being built to connect two freeways and help traffic flow better. This bridge is stable, which means it won't move easily because it's held up by large columns with foundations deep in the ground. And the bridge is sturdy, or strong, because it is built with a mixture of concrete and steel called reinforced steel. Now it's our turn to think like engineers and build our own bridges. In order to do this, we're going to use the engineering design process. All engineers start their work by coming up with a goal or a problem they want to solve. Your challenge will be to design a bridge out of materials you find around the house that will allow a small object to cross without breaking. To do this, you will need to use your imagination and make a plan. Gather different recyclable materials like paper tubes, a box, craft sticks, tape, blocks, and string. But be creative and see what else you can find around your house. You will also need a small object like a car. If you don't have a small car, you can also use other things to test your bridge, like a small ball. Hold your object in your hand so you can feel how heavy it is. Then compare the strengths of your different recyclables. How are you going to use them in your design? Are they going to be strong enough to support your car or object? Draw a sketch of your design before you start. The next step is to create your bridge. Take your time and test the pieces as you go. Testing your project as you go is a good way to save time and fix mistakes if you realize something isn't working. If you've tested your bridge and it holds your car, then great! Maybe it can support even more weight. Add some pennies and see what will happen. But if you tested your bridge and it didn't work, it's okay. Think about what you can do to make your bridge stronger. Then improve it and test again. Now let's check in with Luis, who is doing this activity at home right now. Hey Luis, how's it going? Hi Jessica. This is my plan of the bridge. So I drew the, the sides of the trapezoid and the base there. And I made it out of pasta because I love pasta. So this is my, my bridge and I put it together by gluing it. The sides are like a trapezoid glued together and the, and the bottom are, the ba are for the base of those those lines so they won't break. Now I'm gonna test my bridge. I'm gonna test it with some coins as quarters and place them on top of the bridge and see if it breaks.
Now I'm gonna use some coins as coins. Place them. It wouldn't balance. Oh. I can't. I was worried it would balance. Oh! oh. <laughs> Sorry. That was really fun, but next time, I'll try to make a stronger base. Now, let's check in with Xenia, who is doing this activity at home right now. Xenia, how's it going? Hi, Jessica. I'm trying to make a bridge that goes across and it's very sturdy and just allows a lot of things to go over it. The materials that I used were popsicle sticks, some um, pipe cleaners, some a piece of styrofoam, some cups, a piece of cardboard at the bottom, and so a little bit of tape just to keep keep the popsicle sticks together. This is like really light and so it can just go straight across. But this one's heavy so I don't know what's gonna happen. So if I put it on, it just falls. It probably fell because I didn't put anything right here. So I could probably put maybe some tape or another piece of pipe cleaner or just something else that can keep it there. Wow, that was great. Thanks for sharing your work. It's a really important step in the engineering design process. And kids, I want you to share your creative bridges with me. You can submit a picture or video of your finished project to me through our website at vegaspbs.org slash steamcamp with your grown-ups permission. And remember, if you're submitting a video, make sure I can see what you're doing and hear what you're saying. Also, you'll want to keep your video to one minute or less. We will select some projects from our website, and if we choose yours, you will get a cool PBS Kids bag and a new book. When you visit our website, you'll also find all the steps to the engineering design process that you will need to follow to build your bridge, and links to PBS Kids shows and activities to learn more about bridges and structures. Now, I'm gonna send it back to Noelle one more time who is standing by at the library to talk about another book you can check out to help you learn more about different kinds of bridges and the problems they solve. Hi, I'm Noelle. I'm a librarian at the Sunrise Library. And today you learned quite a bit about bridges. And I know that the kind of bridges that you guys learned about were enormous, made of concrete and rebar and are strong enough for cars and heavy trucks to cross. And that's fascinating. Those are wonderful bridges. But the world is full of different kinds of bridges. And there's a book here that talks about the different kinds of bridges that we have in our planet, a book of bridges. Here to There and Me to You, written by Cheryl Keeley. So this book is an exploration of the, all the different kinds of bridges that we have. We have the great big bridges like you learned about today. And there are bridges that are in two parts that move up and down. These bridges move up so that a boat can pass underneath them if they're spanning a river. Other bridges are meant for animals. Animals need to get where there isn't any food and water to a place where there is food and water. So we have built bridges for them in some parts of the country so that they aren't hit by cars. Here you can see cars and trucks going under the bridge. And the animals can go over the bridge to safely get from where they don't have any water to where they need to be. That's a wonderful thing. You can make a bridge with your own body. You can bend your body forwards or backwards and make your own bridge. In fact, I could make a bridge with my friend Shanna. Shanna, let's make a bridge. All right. So bridges can bring friends together. If you're looking for more books about bridges or many, many other things, you can go to your local library or go to lvccld.org 
and be sure to check out our summer programs. Thank you. Bye.